Hello, I'm Laurie Milan. And I'm Shauna Dempsey. Together, we created a series of bus shelter ads that Floating Gallery, now Platform Center for Photographic and Digital Art, was going to install around the city in 1997. The 90s, despite great strides being made for human rights and awareness, remained a difficult and violent time for queers. Susan Thompson was the mayor of Winnipeg at that time and refused to acknowledge Gay Pride Day. Bashings, discrimination, and threats were common. We had personally received death threats because we displayed the name of our home, Homo Heaven, on a sign visible to the street. Our art practice is always about engaging with ideas and audiences in order to change the world. With this project, we wanted to create the reality we were not seeing around us. What if we branded Winnipeg as a queer utopia? Name it and make it so. Or at the very least, the gap between the homophobic reality of our city and our vision would generate conversation among Winnipeggers. We gathered our friends Fredo Onio, Yvette Nolan, and Gislina Patterson as models, and working with photographer Sheila Spence and Zab Design, we created our own advertising campaign. We wanted to make three large advertising images to be displayed in bus shelters, human-sized, in order to create empathy. Commuters and queers eye-to-eye -eye in the bus shack together. We also wanted to challenge preconceptions about who was gay and who was not, to assert the reality that we can be absolutely anyone. And as a tagline, we parodied Winnipeg's official slogan of the time, One Great City, turning it into One Gay City. Humor can be a powerful tool to reach the public, and this simple transformation of a rather tepid civic slogan was instantly recognizable. But the company responsible for bus shelter ads in Winnipeg would not install our project, citing that they conflicted with community values. We obviously contested this clearly homophobic stance, but even Canadian advertising standards backed them up. It became a national news story, but the bus shelter company would not relent. This resulted in us filing a human rights complaint that was finally settled years later. In the meantime, we produced postcards of the images and disseminated them as widely as we could. Come to Winnipeg, queer capital of Canada. By the time the human rights case was settled, Glenn Murray had been elected mayor of Winnipeg, the first out gay mayor in all of North America. And while we had earned the right to finally display our work, the context of the city had changed. We worried that the work now would be seen, at a glance certainly, as being about our gay mayor, not the larger cultural issues of homophobia. We didn't want him to be the target of blowback for the ads, and we felt that the timing which had been so central to the original concept, was now less than perfect. In light of all this, we decided not to pursue displaying them. So after all these years, it's really exciting to see the ads finally up. We lost the original negatives in a studio fire, so we're especially grateful that U of M could translate the postcard files into such large images. And we are also happy to now live in a time when these images are perhaps, no big deal. It's a testament to change, change that we were far from certain would happen in our lifetime, but clearly illustrates that we can all make the world a fairer place. And certainly, art, with its power to push and pull and expand our perspective, has a big role to play. Hi, my name is Mahalat Kuff, and this is my piece for One Queer City called At Home. I made this because I've been thinking a lot about the ways Black queer people exist and thrive here in Winnipeg. It is, it is a struggle to be Black, but to add a layer of queerness and other gender identity and sexuality is another level of hardship. But throughout that hardship, there are beautiful moments, and that moment was captured in this photograph. I made this for Black, queer, and trans folks to see themselves in a way that is not common here in Winnipeg, and to hopefully show folks that we exist in many forms. The concept of documented archiving is super interesting to me and understanding that these stories of queer and trans Black people are so important. And I'm hoping to uncover the, that more throughout my artistic practice. 
but also understanding that these stories publicly do not exist sometimes because of the fear and trauma that comes with being out as a queer and trans black person. I love getting to know people and asking them questions, but especially photographing them when they feel the most comfortable. So with this photo and all the photos I take, I want to make sure that not only the space they're in is where they feel comfortable, but also they personally feel comfortable and are feeling at, the, at home in their bodies. So this meeting, I tell folks ahead of time to wear an outfit they absolutely love, as well as when they are posing to pose however they want. And as we go along, I may ask, the, may ask them to pose in other ways, but I always want to make sure that they have full control on the way they're being represented. I'm very thankful for Mel, who is in this photograph, for being a part of this and hope to keep taking photos of queer and trans black folks in the future. I'm always very grateful to the folks that let me take photos of them. It truly makes me honored that they're able to let me capture them in the best way that I can. I hope you enjoy this piece and hope you have a great day. Um, so-called Winnipeg, Manitoba, Winninippi, Njaba. Hi everyone, my name is Dana Danger. I use they them pronouns. I identify as a non-binary, two-spirit, indigenous queer person. Um, my mom is Métis Soto and my dad is Polish. Um, I grew up in Winnipeg, so-called Winnipeg, Manitoba for most of my life. Prairie raised, born and raised. Um, and I'm currently living in uh, so-called Montreal or Jojage uh, because I'm on the unceded lands of the Ganeyahaga or Mohawk people here now. So um, I'm really excited to be a part of One Queer City. I've really looked up to Shauna and Lori's work and um, for, a, for, a very long, uh, for a very long time because for a lot of um, us in Winnipeg, queer icons were just like really people that were visible, that were doing stuff wasn't really around. And so for me, it's very fitting as a person that also has um, you know, has been through censorship, through images, through bodily sovereignty and that to be included in this work. I'm very grateful to continue those conversations. Um, and with my work um, that's included, it's a very personal work to me. It's very much just about me and my sister as siblings, um, our upbringing, how we both had to kind of raise each other because of our the circumstances of how we were raised and also be that really be there for each other. Um, so it was very fitting for me to include this because I'm really missing her right now, especially because of COVID. And so, you know, I think she lives, she actually lives downtown close to that, the billboard where she, where um, our bus shack is. <laughs> so it's always, it's always been one thing that I've always wanted to say to my parents is, you know, there's me and my sister in a buck, bus shack, you know? Um, so that's really, that's something that just feels so Winnipeg to me, you know? So the series really was about um, me being lonely in Montreal, really longing for my family, um, for that familial connection. And I was really blessed that my sister was able to, has been able to come visit me a couple of times since I started my photo graduate degree out here in, in Jojage. And through, th through that, her coming to visit me, there was a lot of like back and forth, a lot of discussion about, um, how we wanted to do things. And I'm really surprised. I was really surprised to hear, see that my sister was so on board with everything. No problem getting naked, none of that. Um, and which was really amazing because I, I was like, wow, she's so confident that made, and it made me feel really confident to do this too with her that I could do that. I could be as vulnerable as well with her. And so I feel like there's a lot of vulnerability in this work. Uh, we're really talking about siblings, a little bit of eroticism in there, but not really. There's a lot of play. There's a lot of like this bordering line, you know, that line of like, do you cross it or not? You know, so there's a lot of that, a lot of feelings going on when I look at uh, when I look at that work. Um, but mostly, mostly joy because um, me and my sister are going to look back at this and be like, wow. Like we did that when we were so young, you know, had horse tails coming out of our crotch, had fox tails coming out of our crotch, had, you know, um, wore wigs of our, our own hair color, like really clown type stuff. Really, we're just really playing around and having fun. So, um, get you miigwech for, um, I'm, you know, for, get you miigwech. Um, yeah, all I really want to say is I hope everyone is staying safe out there, and yeah, bye mom. 
Hello, this is Blair Fornwald, curator of One Queer City. Here you can see photo artist Larry Glosson's Homo Heaven, Portrait 39, one of 119 images created for Glosson's anonymous gay and lesbian portraits project, produced by the artist between 1992 and 2003. Demonstrating care and respect for his sitters, the series explores modes of collaborative production, ensuring that the sitters retain some agency over their representation. This particular image features an alternative family household founded in 1993 by Robert Skane, Shauna Dempsey, Stephen Lawson, and Laurie Milan, who appear from left to right. The name of their home, Homo Heaven, was chosen to reflect the possibility of safe, openly out spaces for queers. The residents conceived of this portrait to valorize their homosexuality and to position it as powerful in direct counterpoint to the violent, demeaning, homophobic attitudes of the time. Hi everyone, my name is Ali Gonzalo and I am here to talk about my project for One Queer City called Malakas Matapang Maganda. A little bit about me, I have been a photographer for over seven years now and I am a settler in Treaty 1 territory. I moved here back in 2016 and that's when I decided to get formal training in photography where I discovered my specialization in portraiture work. Now, the name of my project is called Malakas Matapang Maganda. That's in Tagalog. And in, and, in, and in English, it translates to strong, brave, and beautiful. Now, this entire work is uh, is based on a bigger body of work called Bakla, B-A-K-L-A. And Bakla is a queer identity, pre-colonial Filipino queer identity back in the Philippines. But due to colonization, the word has unfortunately been demonized. The reason why I made this uh particular piece is because I wanted to give an homage to all the bakla within the Filipinx community, particularly the trans folks within the bakla community, because they're the ones who are the most marginalized, underserved, and honestly, they are not talked about enough. And I want to start a conversation when it comes to being Filipino and being trans and being queer. Now, the entire thing, when I was designing it, I had the idea of almost like a bus ad approach to it. And that's why I wanted to put the text in the center to almost create like a pulling you in kind of effect with the pieces when you look at it. If you look closely at each of the letters that I used for the text, you'll also notice that there are some characters within the alphabet themselves, and that is actually called Baybayin. Baybayin is a pre-colonial Filipino script that we used, and I wanted to incorporate this because bakla as an identity has existed prior to colonization, and this is another way for me to reconnect with my motherland. Hello, my name is Jean Borbridge, and this is my contribution to One Queer City. The image, entitled Cladding, the application of one material over another to provide a skin or a layer, uh, was made by photographing myself in a heavily collaged environment, cropping details from one photograph and then another, and then re-photographing them back into the same heavily collaged environment. I did this because I wanted to highlight the failure of photography to accurately represent the subjects, the complex performance of gender, and queer femme invisibility. I wanted to create somewhat of a confusing, complex portrait to allow for a slower read of the image. I did this because oftentimes in advertisement, the female body is commodified and consumed in a rapid way. I used the green screen color as a reference or nod to the way that one can cast an identity onto another without really seeing what is behind, um, I guess, a veil or curtain. Um, for me, what is behind the veil or curtain is my queer identity. Thank you so much.